this this right here this guy here is really a lot all right yeah it is it involves the fractional part of x which has a really easy definition and we just from one to infinity but the answer is even very scary natural logarithm of the square root of 2 pi minus 1 i may be thinking how do we get pi from here okay anyway this is going to be my first integral involving the fractional part of x, all right? But we need to understand what the fractional part of x means. So if you have the fractional part of an input x, what does it really mean? Well, as you can see in these tools here, these tools are really going to help us a lot. The first one here will help us to start. And then this one is going to help us to end. And that is really nice, isn't it? Okay, so from here, that tells us, when we're talking about the fractional part of an input, for example, if you're looking at the fractional part of, let's say, 1.2, all right this is going to be just 0 0.2 and that is just the decimal part isn't it so that's what we call the fractional part and if you're looking at the fractional part of a whole number the result is going to be zero because it has no decimal part or the decimal part is just zero so to say okay so that tells us that the fractional part of an input is that input minus an integer that is the whole number Okay, so if you have 1.2, the whole number part is 1, then the fractional part is just 0 0.2. So it's just like saying the original thing, which is the x here, which is 1.2, minus the whole number, minus the 1, to give us 0 0.2. And how do we get the whole number? Okay, we can get it by looking at this, because it has the same behavior as this function. That is the greatest integer function, or you can call it the floor function of x. That function tells us that whatever input we have, okay, we are going to we're going to rewrite it as the, the greatest integer less than that input. So if the input is less than 6.5, okay, and you're taking the floor function of 6.5, the answer is going to be 6, because 6 is the greatest integer less than 6.5. Okay, that's nice, isn't it? So let's just clean this and then um, look at this other second tool. So this second tool tells us that the limit as n tends to infinity of this fraction here is going to be 1. And in fact, this right here is from the Stirling's formula, which tells us that n factorial is approximately equal to, uh, let me write it as, um, the square root of 2 pi, all right, times a raised to the power of n plus 1 half times a raised to the power of negative n. This is from the Stirling's formula. And this is approximately because they are not exactly the same for all n. In fact, this really works well for large n, that is to say, as n approaches infinity. And... Um, if you want to look at the, the absolute error between these two, the absolute error, er error blows up as n approaches infinity, but the relative error, in fact, is negligible. That is to say they are, in fact, almost the same when n approaches infinity. And that tells us that the limit as n tends to infinity of their ratio, that is n factorial divided by the square root of 2 pi times n raised to the power of n plus 1 half times n raised to the power of negative n will just give us 1 for large n. And that is really nice, isn't it? Okay, that's great. Anyway, I'm going to clean all of this, right? And then we are going to look at this thing, how we can handle it. Okay, so let's just get right into it. All right, so looking at this, we are going to rewrite this as we have, as we rewrite um, the partial sum, okay, when we are given an infinite series to evaluate. So I'm going to look at this as the limit as let's say n tends to infinity, all right, of the integral from 1 to n. So I've just brought in n, right? In fact, the tools requires n, so why not? So let's put it like this, and then we are going to rewrite the function just as it is, and then we subtract 1 half divided by x from that, and then dx. So as you can see, we are integrating from 1 to a certain number n, where that number approaches infinity, and that will give us that, isn't it? Okay, great. So let's see what that will be. Okay, so this is going to be the limit as n tends to infinity. In fact, let me not um, take this limit. Let's know that we want to take the limit of this, right? Good. So let's just look at this integral. So we have the integral from 1 to n of the function. Well, the fractional part of x, we know that it is x minus uh, the floor function of x. So let's just put it there. And then we subtract 1 half from that. And in fact, I'm going to split the fraction at the same time. And this is what we are going to have. We can put the dx over here. OK, that's nice. All right, so integrating this, we notice this is going to give us 1. When we integrate that from 1 to n, that's going to give us um, that's going to give us n minus 1, right? The integral of this is going to be x. When x is n, it's going to be n. When x is 1, it's going to be on 1 because n is x is just an identity function. 
okay so this is the second uh, function that is easier to deal with right this one we are going to keep this one for now the middle term there so this is going to be minus well when we integrate this right here it's going to give us natural logarithm of x from n to 1 that will be the natural logarithm of uh, n right we subtract the natural logarithm of 1 from that so maybe i'll just put it here natural logarithm of 1 of course that is just 0 so we can clean it right natural logarithm of 1 is just 0 so we can deal with that so this remains here Okay, that's nice. And now let's see this middle term. So let me just put it down, the integral from 1 to n of the floor function of x divided by x, and then we can put the dx over here. Okay, great. So in fact, let me write it, write it here. We are going to put it there as a limit, right, as n tends to infinity of just that. That will be n minus 1, okay? Okay, that's nice, isn't it? All right, great. So let's just clean this part of the board. And then what we will be doing is we'll be trying to we'll be finding the integral of this function from one to n of this fraction right here. Okay, so let's just get right into it. Okay, so I've written it down here, and this guy is a really stubborn guy, all right? But we are going to see ways to break it down. This right here is the floor function of x and it only outputs integers. And in fact, it would demand us to partition this into different sub-intervals, 1 between 1 and 2, 2 between 2 and 3, and so on and so forth, right? And that would be by adding the integrals, all of them together. And in fact, I can easily rewrite this as the sum, okay? This is just for notational purposes, but I'll clean it and write it the way I want so that we can just be snappy. We can write this down as a sum. Maybe let's use k as k starts from 1 up to something. Then we are going to take the integral of let's put this down as k and then here i'm going to stop at k plus one and that means if i put this sum to start from one to n when n when k is n it will become n and then n plus one but here we should stop at only n but that means i'm going to rewrite this as n minus one so as you can see that works and then we are going to put down the same function dx okay we can put the dx over here all right Great. So taking the sum, we are going to have this to be, well, when k is 1, from 1, that will be 1, 2, right? That will be the integral from 1 to 2 of the original function, which is the floor function of x divided by x. We put the dx over here. We add it with, well, when k becomes 2, that will be 2 to 3, right? So we put the 2 to 3 here. The floor function of x divided by x, and we put the dx over here, and so on and so forth, right? So maybe I can just put dot, dot, dot. Now, when n become, when k becomes n minus 1. Okay, let me do a term before that n minus 1 so that we can really see what is going on there. So when n is n, when k becomes n minus uh, 2, we're going to have this integral to start from n minus 2 to n minus 1. The reason is n minus 2, n minus 2 plus 1, right? We put the floor function of x divided by x and we put the dx over here. We can add it with the last term, which will be the integral from n minus 1 to n, okay? And that is it here just the n right and we put the floor function of x divided by x and we can put the dx over here all right that's nice so as i said we uh successfully we've successfully split these integrals into the sum of uh how many of them n minus one integrals right or into the sum of n minus one terms and they all add up to give us that because this is just from one to two from two to three from three to four and so on and so forth to you from n minus 1 to n, right? And that is how we can write it in terms of um, the sigma notation. Okay, that's nice. Now, let's see. Now, notice that, notice that between 1 and 2, okay, between 1 and 2, the floor function of x will become 1. That is to say, every decimal number between 1 and 2, the floor function will truncate the number and gives us and to give us 1. So, that means this is going to become the integral from 1 to 2, of 1 okay over x dx okay so you notice that we add it with again the integral from 2 to 3 well between 2 and 3 the floor function will take us down to 2 so that means the floor function will remain 2 for every num for, for every x value between 2 and 3 we're going to put this over x and we can continue like that maybe let me do the third one for you to see the integral from 3 to 4 okay of this will become 3 because between 3 and 4 the flow function will give us 3 over x dx and then we can continue and so on till we get to the second to the last term 
and we can add it with the last term which is the integral from n minus 1 to n of the flow function of that will give us just n minus 1 divided by x and we can put the dx over here okay that's nice and now let's see when we integrate each of these terms what do we get well the integral of this first term here this is just going to give us the natural logarithm of x, right? From 2 to 1. So when we substitute 2, we're going to have the natural logarithm of 2 minus the natural logarithm of 1. Of course, that is just going to be 0. Let me put it, make it a squared bracket. Then we are going to add it with, well, when we integrate this, we're going to have 2 times the natural logarithm of x. So maybe let me put the 2 out front, okay? 2 times the natural logarithm of x. And the natural logarithm of x will be taken over this bound, so that will be the natural logarithm of 3, that is when x is 3, minus the natural logarithm of 2, that is when x is 2. We add it with, we can continue like that for this third term, right? And maybe for this second to the last term, you are going to have um, this to be, uh, you know, when we factor this out, that will become n minus 2, okay? Then we uh, integrate that. Let, let me put it here so that you can really see what is going on there. So when we factor that n minus 2, we put it out here. When we integrate this, that will be natural logarithm of x, right? Okay, that's nice. Natural logarithm of x from n minus 2 to n minus 1. So we put natural logarithm of n minus 1. We subtract it with um, natural logarithm of n minus 2, okay? And then we are going to add it to the last term, which we can factor out n minus 1. And then we are going to take the natural logarithm of n minus the natural logarithm of n minus 1. That's really nice, isn't it? Okay, great. So what I will do is to clean from the top to the second to the last step, all right? And when we do that, we are going to see what this will be. But maybe you can just observe it a little bit. This is natural logarithm of 2. This is negative of that, negative 2 times that. That means adding these two together, we are going to have negative 1. This will be 0. 2 times natural logarithm of 3. The next one will be negative of that, all right? Let me show you here. This will be 3 times the natural logarithm of 4 minus the natural logarithm of 3 we can add and continue so 2 times neg negative 2 times natural logarithm of 2 plus okay this will be this time that will be 2 times natural logarithm of 3 okay minus 3 times natural logarithm of 3 that will give us negative natural logarithm of 3 so all these terms will have a negative right just negative 1 multiplied with it it's only this term that will be left that will have a positive sign okay so let me clean from the that as i said and then we are going to continue from there Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this as n minus 1 times the natural logarithm of n, n minus 1 times that, okay? Now, you notice that n minus 2 times the natural logarithm of n minus 1, okay? Then we multiply it by, or we subtract n minus 1 times the natural logarithm of n minus 1. That will give us negative 1 times the natural logarithm of n minus 1, and so on and so forth. So we can subtract, uh, maybe let me just continue natural logarithm of n minus 2, we can subtract and so on and so forth, till we subtract um, negative, okay, I've already subtracted it, natural logarithm of 3, we subtract natural logarithm of 2, and of course, natural logarithm of 1 is going to be 0, and that's a negative hanging out here. So you notice, notice, notice it's like a telescoping uh, series, but the terms don't cancel out, right? Okay, great. So you notice that each of these terms has a negative sign, so we can factor out the negative, we will have n minus 1, then the natural logarithm of n minus, we are going to put them all together, that will be natural logarithm of n minus 1, okay, plus natural logarithm of n minus 2, and so on and so forth, till we get to natural logarithm of 3 plus natural logarithm of 2. Okay, that's nice. Now, let's notice what we have there, uh, natural logarithm of n. We subtract, well, well. Natural logarithm of n minus 1 plus natural logarithm of n minus 2, and so on and so forth. Using the property of logarithms, which tells us that logarithm of that the sum of the logarithms is the logarithm of the product. So that means we are going to have no, natural logarithm of this times that times that, and so on, and so on and so forth. Okay, so we are going to multiply the arguments of the logarithms, which means this is exactly equal to n minus 1 factorial right n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 and so until we get to 2 is n minus 1 factorial where 1 does not um, change the product okay great so maybe i can claim this right here and now now that we've gotten to this point okay that is the integral of this term here let's just put this back into this uh 
limiting object all right and then you see what we have but i wouldn't really want to write out the limit i just want us to see what the inside will be simplified to before we take the limit as n tends to infinity so let's put down n minus one okay and then we subtract uh one half of natural logarithm of n from that and then we are going to subtract this is negative so we subtract n minus one times the natural logarithm of n plus okay natural logarithm of n minus one factorial okay that's nice now uh, let me just rewrite this a little bit we're going to have negative one um plus this maybe i can say minus negative n okay and then we we're going to combine these three together take note they all have a natural logarithm with them so when we combine this and that with that take note this right here is positive so when we put this out means this will stay on top right that will be the natural logarithm of this term here that will be n minus one factorial we divide it by well we're going to divide it by n raised to power one half and also we multiply it by we raise this one to power n raised to power n minus one right okay so the power is just n minus one and that is from here well well let's put this down as let me equate this all right negative one this right here i'm going to use the inverse property that exists between the natural the natural exponential function and the natural logarithmic function and that means we can rewrite this as the nat the natural logarithm of e raised to the power of negative of negative n right okay so we can add it with the natural logarithm of this term well we have negative n minus one factorial there i don't really like it it doesn't look complete so i would like to rewrite it as n factorial and that would just be by multiplying the top by n okay and then multiply the bottom by the same thing i notice when we we'll multiply the top by n that would become n factorial at the top and then we can divide it by well we are going to combine these three things together given that they have the same base so n n n we put a single n here then we're going to add the powers n minus one plus one that will just be n plus one half that will be n plus one half as a power right okay very very nice and um also we can combine these two together and when we combine them together we're going to have negative one okay i can add it with all right natural logarithm natural logarithm so that's why we are going to combine them and when we do that you notice that this has a negative exponent so this is it will come down that is we have natural logarithm of e to power negative of negative um, an input is going to be the same thing as natural logarithm of 1 over e to power negative n okay so in fact this will become n factorial divided by uh this right here that will be n raised to the power of n plus one half okay we multiply it by e raised to the power of negative n as i talked about there okay that is it now this right here we can pause here a little bit and then look at the limit all right so i'll claim from here to the second to the last line and then we will continue from there okay that's nice so you notice this right here it was from the object okay this um thing we were looking at and then we are now taking the limit of that okay because this is exactly equal to that input for the limit so this is it here okay so you notice that this negative one is a constant with respect to the limit so this is going to give us just negative one plus the limit of this function so you notice this right here okay natural logarithm of a thing well the limit of the natural logarithm of a thing is the natural logarithm of the limit of that because the limit here the natural logarithm here is a continuous function so that means we are going to take the natural logarithm of the limit okay as n tends to infinity of n factorial divided by n raised to the power of n plus one half times e raised to the power of negative n okay that's nice this is negative one plus well well the limit as n tends to infinity of this right here take note of the second tool remember the first tool helped us to start this right here is going to help us to end and that means we are ending very soon so just stay right to the end right and remember to subscribe to my channel okay so that's what we have what the limit as n tends to infinity of this gives us one this is really similar to what we have here the only difference is that here we have um the square root of two pi okay at the bottom but here it is not there so we can take away the square root of two pi and it's really easy to take it out and that is because it's just a constant with respect to the limit so that would be by multiplying both sides by the square root of two pi so if you multiply this side we are going to have the square root of two pi here on the right hand side okay and then we multiply the left hand side by that this will just cancel out
That means this will become um, the limit as n tends to infinity of that, which is exactly what we have here. So this will become the natural logarithm of that what we have here, which is the square root of 2 pi. So in fact, let me just put it down here, the square root of 2 pi. And in fact, that is the answer for this question. So that tells us that the integral of that from 1 to infinity, which we've taken the limit to ensure that, okay, is just this. So let me put it down very, very well. Natural logarithm of that, that will be this right here, of the square root of 2 pi. Isn't that very nice? Okay, anyway, thanks for watching and um, I hope you enjoyed this video, isn't it? If you enjoyed this video, please do also subscribe to my channel, share this video with your friends and I will see you in our next video. Alright.